Admiral Sharp, it's my impression that we are losing fewer planes over North Vietnam lately. Is this true? Generally speaking, yes it is. We, uh, our loss rate per thousand sorties, is, which is the way we figure uh, our, our how we're doing, is down somewhat. Uh, it's down considerably from what it was uh, six months ago. And it's uh, generally at, a, at a quite a satisfactory rate for uh, uh, what we're doing. Well, why is this uh, that we suddenly, not suddenly, but now have a better record? Well, we have uh, uh, our electronic uh, uh, situation is better. We have some good weapons that we use against the flak sites that uh, hurt the enemy very much, and make it difficult for them. We find them trying to dig in uh, to avoid these, uh, these uh, excellent weapons. And the MiGs haven't given us too much trouble. Uh, when they do, we generally uh, shoot down a few of them, and then they go back and, and, uh, say, and stay clear of us. So that, uh, and we've destroyed quite a few MiGs, both in the air and on the ground. It's a combination of all these things, and also a, a presence over the area in strength, which means that their, uh, their defenses are beaten down, and I, that, I think is the overall reason. Better tactics, better weapons. We appear to be concentrating more uh, lately on the targets in the northeast uh, quadrangle or triangle there where the uh, rail line leads to communist China. Is this so? We've had uh, an increased presence in that area since uh, around April, uh, which is uh, about the start of the, of the good weather season up there. Weather uh, during part of the year is pretty bad up in that area. Uh, we have, since April, had an increased uh, uh, sortie rate up in that area and, uh, and done a lot of damage. And I think we've done, I'm very proud of my Air Force and uh, Navy components for what they've done in that area. Are there any signs that the turmoil inside Communist China has now grown to the stage where it's interfering with uh, Communist Chinese shipments into North Vietnam? No, we haven't had any uh, any indications that uh, that there's been a reduction in shipments. I think our interdiction efforts over the Northeast Rail Line have probably caused more reduction than anything else. Congressman Ford and some others who uh, support the war in Vietnam and who seem to think that we should do more believes that uh, somehow or other there's uh, an effort being made that the military uh, opposes to unnecessarily restrict the military. Now you're sitting here uh, at the central point of command. Are you aware of any uh, problems in this area? Or do you think that you're being unnecessarily hampered? Well, as I said uh, before, John, yeah. at, the, at the start of this campaign, we were operating under very severe restrictions. Yeah. As uh, time has gone on, the restrictions have, have been uh, lesson. Uh, at the present time, at this particular time, uh, uh, we are able to do uh, much up in the northeast area. We're able to hit a lot of good targets. Uh, there are lots of good targets available. Mm -hmm. So that uh, I feel that we have a, have a good uh, set of ground rules for our air campaign right at this time. Mm -hmm. As you look ahead, would you anticipate that uh, we would be hitting more targets in North Vietnam rather than fewer? Well, I would hope so. As, as time goes on and we destroy targets, I, uh, I, I want more targets assigned so that I can uh, uh, turn our forces loose on them. How do you answer those who say that uh, it is really impossible to bomb what amounts to an agricultural society in North Vietnam into defeat and that uh, this is a self-defeating kind of exercise that we should have never have started? Well, I just don't agree with it. Certainly, uh, North Vietnam is an agricultural society, basically. Yeah. However, you have to remember that uh, the base area of Hanoi and Haiphong uh, is the point from which all, into which all material flows and out of which the material flows that supports this aggression. So that uh, getting into that uh, base area and uh, restricting the flow of material into it and getting what we can as it comes out and at the same time uh, hitting their war supporting industries and putting them out of commission I think is a very essential part of this war and uh, We just must keep it up. Well general in your view. What would happen if we stopped the bombing tomorrow? Let's say well if we stopped the bombing tomorrow, I think that uh, that we'd be uh, In great difficulties we the first thing we'd have to do would be to immediately get more troops into South Vietnam because uh, With no bombing they're going to move their supplies down at will they're going to take these people off of the of fixing their LOCs and, and, uh, and draft them into their army, so we'd be facing a, 
pretty intolerable situation. You think this would then multiply the manpower needs on the ground in South Vietnam? It certainly would. And by the way, John, I want to thank you for alternating me calling me Admiral, Admiral and General, Admiral, well. because I am a joint commander, and I like to <laughs> have that recognized. It comes out every so often. Uh, Admiral Sharp, <laughs> how many Chinese do you estimate have been sent into North Vietnam to help guard, repair, and operate some of these railroads which link China with North Vietnam? Has there been any we, we, don't, uh, we don't know exactly, but we estimate in the neighborhood of uh, 50,000 uh, Chinese are down in the, in the northeast uh, quadrant repairing rail lines and lines of communication, and also there are quite a few Chinese down there operating uh, AAA uh, batteries anti-aircraft gun batteries. Do you see any sign of a buildup uh, of Chinese forces along the border, uh, either on the ground or on the airfields, which uh, could be uh, menacing for the future? No. Uh, since the war has started, of course, there has been a, a gradual buildup of, uh, of North Vietnamese air, but it's not anything that uh, is particularly of concern to us. Retired General Shoup, the former commandant of the Marine Corps, has advanced a proposal that President Johnson offered to send peace negotiators uh, to a conference to be held at a time and place that Hanoi might choose, and that the start of the talks should be a signal for the United States to declare a complete ceasefire on the air and on the ground and on the sea, and uh, as a means of getting uh, the Vietnamese war ended. What do you think of such a proposal? Well, I haven't seen uh, Dave Shoup's proposal, but if he's proposing that, I think he must be forgetting our experience in Korea. In Korea, you remember, we had a good uh, offensive going in 1951, and the communists said they wanted to negotiate. So as the negotiations started, our offensive was unilaterally slowed down. The communists continued to negotiate uh, for two years after that, and whereas we had lost, uh, I think, uh, 12,000 Americans before the negotiations started, we lost, we lost some 21,000 after the negotiations were underway. To my mind, the way to get the communists to negotiate and to get the negotiations completed as quickly as possible is to continue the pressure while we negotiate. And I strongly recommend that that be the way uh, we act. Vietnam is about, to, South Vietnam is about to have its first national elections to elect the president. The administration seems to be banking very heavily on this as a sign that Vietnam slowly but gradually is moving toward uh, a kind of democracy. Do you put much stake in these elections as an important uh, step along the road? Yes, I certainly do, I, uh, John. I think that the, the uh, elections are very important. And I would also point out that this is a, quite a courageous thing for the South Vietnamese to do, to have an election and uh, shift into this kind of a of a democratic system in the middle of a war. Uh, I think we overlook the fact that uh, these people are taking quite a risk when they do this. And I think uh, there have been some minor troubles with, uh, with uh, the campaigning uh, here this last week. But generally speaking, I think they're doing an outstanding job of preparing the country for these elections, and I, I hope that they'll be successful. I think they will be. Admiral Sharp, as you look ahead, uh, in South Vietnam on our ground operations. How are we doing and where are we going? Well, I think, uh, generally speaking, our ground operations are going well. The, uh, we've made it uh, completely uh, impossible for the North Vietnamese to achieve any kind of a victory uh, over the past year. Uh, we've uh, been able to uh, kill a large number of, their, of the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. Uh, we've uh, kept them on the move all the time. We've been in, uh, Westy has been into their base areas. Uh, we're on the offensive tactically uh, all the time. Uh, we find that they don't like to come out and fight. They uh, tend to, to uh, divert their efforts to guerrilla terrorist tactics, assassination, kidnapping, and all that sort of thing. But uh, generally speaking, I think we've done very well, and I think we'll continue to do well. The, the war is not at a stalemate. Admiral Sharp, thank you very much for sitting here with me today to discuss the Vietnam War for school. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. A word about next week's ABC Scope presentation after this message in just one minute. This has been
in ABC Scope, The Vietnam War, Part 86, Report on the Bombing. Join us next week at this time over many of these same ABC stations when ABC Scope will present Battlefront in the Other War, a revealing personal report on the progress of the crucial pacification program in a single Vietnamese province. John Causier speaking. This has been a presentation of ABC News. Special thanks this week to ABC affiliate KHVX-TV Honolulu for making facilities available for the preparation of this program. Enjoy an ABC Sports exclusive live coverage of the last four holes in the final two rounds of the $100,000 American Golf Classic in color tomorrow afternoon here on ABC.